someday will definitely build a perfect house for us. We made that promise before we got married. But the dream of owning a house, let alone our happiness, got completely messed up thanks to my mother-in-law. It was unbelievable how my husband changed drastically too. When I thought my difficult life was going to persist, I made a choice to take action. I'm Reese, a 28-year-old. My husband, Victor, is five years older than me. We recently celebrated our first anniversary. We met through a dating app. I was initially skeptical, but I was drawn to his sweetness, and our relationship blossomed. I had a strong desire to get married, and he also wanted to settle down, so it was a good match. Initially, we had a loving married life, as I had imagined. However, he started to change after six months. The trigger was the divorce of his parents. Honey, it seems my parents are done for. Really? I only had a shallow connection with them, so I honestly didn't know how to react. Your dad's working, so he should be fine. But what about your mom? Oh, it's all good. She'll rent an apartment. But how will she manage financially? She's been a housewife, right? We'll support her. Me and you. Huh? What do you mean? I was in disbelief as he said it so casually. We need to support my mom. Together. Oh, wait a minute. Why should we pay for her rent? She's in trouble, so obviously we must help her. Right? No, if it were only you, I might understand. But why should I? It makes no sense, does it? Come on, honey. She'd be grateful, and you'll benefit from this too. I remember you said you didn't want to move in with her before. I'm trying to be understanding and accommodate that. He was right. I had told him before we got married that I didn't want to live with my in-laws. Even so, I still didn't understand why I had to cover her rent. I stubbornly insisted. I neither want to live with her nor pay her rent. Period. Plus, we're supposed to save money to build our own house. There's no other way. Things have changed, you know. It's not like I've given up on that either. Right now, my priority is mom. You're being irrational. If you want to support her that much, why don't you pay for it yourself? What? And I have to pay our living expenses? On top of that, it would wipe out all my spending money. Think about me a little. He let out a heavy sigh, and then he retreated into the bedroom. What's up with that? Why should I be the one getting scolded? Most of all, what's Heather thinking? It's just not right that she's trying to make me pay her rent. The next day, Victor came back home with her in tow. She put on some fake tears and began pleading. Reese, you heard about my divorce, right? I'm in a tough spot right now. You understand, don't you? Yeah, sure, but when you split up, it was pretty obvious that you'd have a hard time making ends meet, right? But I couldn't take it anymore. I was tired of being with that stubborn man. Even so. Anyway, I moved to a nearby apartment, so I ask you guys to cover the rent for me. Jeez. It was so presumptuous, and I was about to disagree, but Victor intervened. He stood between us and glared at me. Listen. Are you really going to complain when she's desperately asking for help? What's wrong with you? Why should I be spoken to like that? I'm not working to support her, you know? Jeez, you're really heartless. You're just a wife, so listen to what I say. What the heck is that supposed to mean? After that, I continued 
to be berated by both of them. And eventually, I caved in. I really didn't want her to move in with us, so I reluctantly agreed to pay half of the rent. From then on, she started showing up at our house unannounced almost every day. Oh, Reese, you're home at last. I'm staying over tonight. Again? You stayed over the day before too. Yeah, so what? Anyway, can you make dinner quickly? I'm starving. Even Victor, who was already back home, chimed in. Me too. Hurry up. What's wrong with this mother and son? If they're hungry, why can't they just make something themselves? I'm working too, so why should I take care of them? Heather's audacity didn't stop there. Every time she came over, she would ask me for money. Hey, Reese, I really want to buy some clothes this month. Oh, yeah? Then why don't you ask Victor to buy them for you? He needs money for various things, you know. That's why I'm asking you. Please, just uh, $500 would do. Um, I want to save money too, you know. Why are you so stingy? You're so cold for a daughter-in-law. Who demands money from their daughter-in-law in the first place? She's so shameless. Victor, who must have overheard our conversation, intervened. Hey, you can't even lend a mere $500 when she's in such a tight spot? A mere $500? It's a lot of money. I'm working my butt off for it, you know? You're making quite good money, so don't be stingy. You're such a Scrooge. I barely held back the urge to shout back, Who's talking? I knew if I did, it would only escalate further. One evening, Victor brought up an idea out of the blue. Honey, you've got a pretty good amount of savings, right? Oh, well... I found his question suspicious, but I responded calmly. I've been saving up for our future home since before we got married. Right. I'm doing pretty well, too. So, how about we build a house now? Does it mean we're moving out of here? My hesitant question was met with a cheerful smile. Exactly. Let's find a plot in a nice location. We'll be living there for the rest of our lives. So, let's build our perfect home. Our perfect home? That was something I had wanted for a long time. I wanted to create a lovely house filled with our own preferences. I had always dreamed of it. For me, his proposal sounded so bright and promising. The only way to escape the hell with Heather living nearby was to have a new home far away. I looked him straight in the eyes and answered, I seriously want to consider this. From then on, we started making preparations. We purchased the land we previously had our eyes on, had meetings with construction companies, and juggled those tasks alongside our jobs. Everything seemed to be moving flawlessly. The only concern I had was that the deed of the property was put in Victor's name. It should have been a joint tenancy. When I suggested we share the mortgage in the deed, he insisted that he wanted to handle it, and I reluctantly agreed. He pushed through the loan forcefully, and after various twists and turns, our new home was completed the following year. Two weeks before the move, Heather came over after a long absence. Long time no see, Reese. I heard the new house is finished. How exciting. Yeah, it's been a while, Heather. Until then, I despised even seeing her face, but knowing we would soon be moving away gave me a sense of relief. However, right after that, she said something unbelievable. We're moving in a little while.
all right. My room's in the back on the first floor. Isn't it? Huh? I couldn't comprehend what she just said about her room for a second. What do you mean by your room? Oh, please. You know what I'm talking about. You had a spacious ensuite made for me, right? Sure, we did, but that's because Victor insisted on making a guest room. It's for my sake. What? I immediately confronted Victor, seeking an explanation. As she said, I had that room made for her. Hold on. Does this mean she's moving in? I didn't agree to that. Is there a problem? You know the house is in my name. Wait, is that why you were so adamant about having your name only? He made a smug smile and said, You're just realizing it now? Watching our exchanges, Heather started giggling. Stunned, I stood there as he waved a piece of paper in front of me. What's that? Take a look. It's a divorce petition form, and it's already signed. You're kidding. Do you really think I'd stay married to someone who defies me and my mom? Do it again and I'll submit it. Got it? Are you seriously saying that? Do you think I'm joking about something like this? I'm dead serious. A divorce would bring shame on you, wouldn't it? He and Heather both smirked as they observed my reaction. Then she chimed in, taking the opportunity to belittle me. Reese, for your own sake, you better start listening to us carefully from now on. After all, you're just a daughter-in-law. You should just keep quiet and obey. Got it? Victor threw the form at me and left the living room with her. I had more than enough. I couldn't imagine living with those two for the rest of my life. I wasn't going to let them have their way. That was the moment when the anger I had been holding back erupted all at once. From the next day on, I started looking for another place while juggling my job, making slow progress with my moving preparations and trying not to let them find out. I packed my belongings little by little, trying to remain inconspicuous. On the day before our move to the next house, they had gone out to see furniture, leaving me an opportunity. I moved my things into the apartment I had secretly arranged. The next day, just as I had expected, Heather called. Hey, Reese, it's a moving day, and you've been out since last night. Where have you gone? Well, I have some business to take care of. What's the matter? What's the matter? I've brought some of my stuff to the new place, so open the door for me. Victor hasn't arrived yet either. Anyway, hurry up. She was bossing me around, as if living together was a giving. I decided to point out her misunderstanding. Um, Heather, I don't know what you're getting wrong, but my move was yesterday. What? Are you crazy? The move is today, isn't it? No, it was yesterday. Well, at least my move was yesterday. I really don't get what you're talking about. Your move is supposed to be on the same day as Victor's. She was frantically yelling at me to hurry up and get there. I had been waiting for the opportunity to drop the bomb. I'm living alone from today. Living alone? It means, please handle your move yourself. It doesn't concern me anymore. What? What are you telling me, Reese? She was clearly confused. So, I continued. In fact, I filed for a divorce from your son. I have no obligation to care about you anymore. Divorce? Wait, you better explain this. I just did. Your son threatened me with a divorce. So I went to see a lawyer and filed a divorce petition. Oh, 
come to think of it, I recall something like that. I can't bear living with insensitive people like you, and I refuse to continue playing a family. So I decided to be single again. Ugh, do you even know what you're saying? At that point, Victor must have arrived, and I heard him asking what was going on. When he learned that I had filed for a divorce and moved to a different place, he angrily took the phone and started screaming. You! What the heck do you think you're doing? What a selfish thing to do! Who'd been selfish all this time? You agreed to cover the rent for your mom and decided to live together without asking me. Do you even understand how I felt while I was living with you guys? Who cares? Just come back quickly. I won't accept the divorce. Whatever you say, I simply accepted your threat. You do understand that it can't be reversed now, right? Who do you think you're talking to? Just get back here now. He, along with Heather, continued to berate me over the phone. Unable to bear it, I raised my voice as well. Come back? Who are you to say that? You threatened me with a divorce first. You keep imposing your own convenience on me. You're nothing but trash. I was surprised by my own fierceness. It was evidence of how much stress I kept inside me. Wait, Reese. If we get divorced, what happens to the mortgage? Who cares? You set it up on your own. You were the one who said, I want to handle this. But it was based on our combined earnings. I'm divorcing you, so I don't care. It's none of my business. Darn you. I can't stand being with a low human who can't even consider other people's feelings. I'd rather be alone than live with trash like you. Never get involved with me ever again. Then I hung up the phone. Of course, I made sure to block his calls as well. Afterward, it's needless to say what happened to that mother and son. Initially, Victor managed to pay the mortgage, but he hit his limit after four months. It was obvious that he couldn't have continued with the repayment of the loan that was set up by relying on my salary. As a result, he had to sell the new house. However, even after deducting the selling price, the mortgage remains. Currently, he lives in an apartment with Heather, struggling with the monthly payments. The life Heather envisioned is far from reality, marked by constant arguments between them. On the other hand, my life is incredibly comfortable now. I didn't share my new address with them, so there's no fear of ambush. I can live as I please in this new chapter of my life, and it truly makes me happy. While I didn't achieve my dream of owning a perfect home, that's perfectly fine with me. The best part of it all is being free from that mother-son duo.